to be young and inexperienced again. Go ghost hunting with your friends. Don't really know what to expect, what to do, or how to handle something if it happens. Well, something does happen to a group of uh, teenagers who decide to embark on a ghost hunt. What happens after that? Well, it's kind of craziness. If you want to hear that story, it's on APP Bonus Episode 59 of Real Ghost Stories Online. Just uh, go to realghoststoriesonline.com. Click Become an EPP. Sign up and you'll get access to that episode and all 60, some of our bonus episodes and exclusive video content as well. Your support helps keep our show on the air and we greatly appreciate that. Sign up on the web, realghoststoriesonline.com. Click become an EPP. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802. Or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You're about to enter the world of the unknown, and quite possibly, the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That indeed it is, and on today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online, could a female presence be the one that's helping a child locate lost toys? What do you do when the monster in the closet actually touches you? A family finds something in their home that doesn't pass the inspector's inspection, and a listener believes he sees the ghost of a younger version of himself. That sounds interesting. Yeah. It's one of those where it kind of makes you go, oh, I didn't think of that yet. <laughs> this adds a whole other limb to the ghostly family tree. Those stories are calls and more today on Real Ghost Stories Online. Tony and Jenny Bruski joining you once again. And how are you this uh, this fine day? I'm good. How are you? I'm still not enjoying quinoa. I know. I just can't like this grain. It's a grain, right? I think it is. It's it's so overused, and it's so in like oh I have some quinoa. I have this quinoa. We went out to lunch today, and and I had a piece of fish, and it came on on quinoa. And I, I normally don't order it, but I was trying to be a little healthier. And it was just like, okay, it's probably better than a whole big plate of rice, which actually uh, I learned not that long ago that it's really not. It's about the same when you're talking about caloric intake and everything else that's not great for you. It's right up there. Uh, but it's, I think people just enjoy saying the word quinoa. I think in this case, you ended up, you ate the fish, mm -hmm. you picked at the quinoa, and later you're going to end up eating something unhealthy when you're hungry because you had a wasted plate full of quinoa. I think that's it. Yeah. So in your effort to be healthy and eat this crap. Well, I, I got that for the fish. I didn't get it for the quinoa. I could have completely passed on the quinoa. I know. I'm just, I'm just don't, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I normally can find a way to like almost any sort of food if you doctor it up some way or another. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm still hoping that somewhere when I try this, I'm going to find some preparation that someone did. I'll be like, oh, this is actually really good like that. I've yet to have that happen. And see, I'm all for eating healthy, but... Yeah. If I try something twice and it mm -hmm. doesn't pass either time, I'm not going to keep getting it, hoping that someplace is magically <laughs> going to make it to not taste like cardboard. It's like the definition of insanity, me and me and quinoa. I don't order it very much, but every yeah. once in a while it happens to be on a plate. So I'm like, let me try this. Let me. Nope. Still not. It's crap. The face can go away anytime now. Anyway, just go back to the good old quiche. Mm -hmm. That's all you got to do. 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. We, of course, would love to hear them because that's what we do here at Real Ghost Stories Online. Lots of ways to get those stories to us. Our first letter today comes into us from Kelly, and Kelly writes in, we moved into our home in 1996. It's a large turn-of-the-century home that needed lots of TLC. We've experienced many paranormal episodes over the years. A resident ghost likes to humor herself. About 15 years ago, I was alone in our home with our one-year-old twin boys. I was sending them into their cribs for the afternoon nap. One of our twins, Ethan, was very attached to a certain blankie, as many children do. I could not find that blankie anywhere. I looked in the crib, under it, all over the nursery. And then began to look in every room of our home without success. I returned to the nursery to find a blankie in the middle of the floor where I'd been kneeling in plain sight. Our basement consists of two large rooms. The first room off the stairs is a storage area. My husband John uses the back room as his woodworking area. The rooms are separated by a doorway against the stairway wall. 
One evening, John came up from the basement looking very pale and shaking. He walked into his woodworking room to retrieve something and immediately walked back to the basement doorway into the main storage area. In his path was one of those toddler toys you push with a handle, little colorful plastic balls, a plastic dome pop. The toy was not there moments before, but what frightened my husband was the fact that the toy was upside down on its curved dome with the handle not supported by anything. Someone had to be holding the handle to keep the toy from falling over, but no one was there. The reason that I call our resident ghost a she is because of an incident that our son Ethan had when he was about eight. He's playing a game on our computer with the boy from next door. The boys both looked up from the computer to see a woman in an old-fashioned long pink dress standing next to them and watching them play. The frightened boys both ran outside. Our young neighbor did not venture back into the home for a long time. Thank you for the podcast. I'm enjoying it immensely. I think that is interesting that it it's manipulating things like that. And it's obvious that it's, it's something that shouldn't be happening. Mm-hmm. I mean, as far as the physics of how a toy can yeah. balance like that. I can picture that. those domes. Yeah. You know, th- those are very... There's no way you're going to get that thing to stand up like that. No. No. That would be very disturbing to have that show up. I mean, I think what may, I mean, so far it doesn't seem to be doing anything real harmful. No. But just the fact that there's something that seems to be interested in interacting, at least with the toys of the kid, makes you think it's going to want to interact more with the kid. Mm -hmm. That's the scary part. I almost think it's like a grandmotherly type spirit. And it could be. It would just be nice to, as a parent, if you're in that situation, get a little more definition on what sort of ghosts are coming around (laughs) your kid. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay, you're you're a good ghost. You can come hang out. That's fine. Mm -hmm. The other night, it was funny. We were, um, uh, we had a big ice storm here. Mm -hmm. And uh, essentially from like Thanksgiving to uh, about Monday, Uh, It was pretty much ice everywhere all around us. And after that happens, when you have an ice storm, um, you have immense cracking and thuds and weird noises if you go outside. Because all of the trees and anything, you know, the buildings, decks, anything around it, it, the the ice as it is coming off is is cracking in all these weird places. And it sounds kind of eerie, Mm -hmm. especially if there's no wind. And there really wasn't much wind, thank God, because it would have been much worse. But uh, it's just a weird, eerie sound. And our littlest was downstairs. <laughs> it, she was she was going to bed, and she she always sleeps with her light on for a while. But she was kind of freaked out because these were sounds she had never heard before. Mm-hmm. And, and her bedroom window, right that right near it, is pretty close to a deck area, so she can hear all of that. And and she was crying. And, and normally she's really a good trooper. She goes through thunderstorms. She's never had an issue with thunderstorms. Knock on wood. We knock on wood. Yeah. But uh, but these are weird sounds. So I went in there and just calmed her down, comforted her. You know, you know, it's okay. And I said, you know, what, what are you hearing? She's like, there's noises outside my room. And and I knew it was the deck and, mm-hmm. and that sort of stuff. I'm like it's okay. And I explained to her like how I explained thunder. Angels are bowling. Mm-hmm. And it works. That's so how it was explained to me, and it worked great. It works great with her. And I said, Well, you know how, like, the angels bowl? It's just, it's the animals that are outside, out in the woods, way back there. They're out there playing in the ice, and they're just having fun. So you're hearing that. You're hearing, you know, them climbing up stuff. It's nothing to worry about. They're just playing, you know, you know. And I said, They're playing Batman. How you like to play Batman? Oh, I like to play Batman. And then she's like, she was cool with it. I said, well, what does it sound like? And this is this is the kicker. This is the fun part. This is where the tie-in happens. What's it, what does it sound like, honey? Zombies. <laughs> How does that child even know what a zombie sounds like? I don't know. We don't watch any zombie thing around her. She doesn't see any of that stuff. I'm, You know, but that um, she watches a, a cartoon Batman show from like the 90s mm-hmm. that's on Netflix or Amazon or something. And um, there's a lot of monsters on there. Um, from time to time, so I'm that, and she watches Scooby Doo. That could be, and I'm I'm guessing Scooby Doo of, of they have monsters on these shows, so I'm guessing Scooby Doo probably has had a zombie or two, mm-hmm. and that's the association. But it's just, it's cute, <laughs> and kind of funny, and at the same time, you just you want to hug her and like everything's okay, which I did. Um, but it's just hearing, looking at this little, you know, innocent, go look up at you and say. 
it sounds like zombies. <laughs> It's just, it was kind of funny. Yeah. But anyhow, that's just my tie into that, you know, the story with the kids. Anyhow, 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. Diamond writes in, this paranormal event isn't anything new to me, but it's always has a way of surprising me. My first encounter with an entity was when I was about six. I've always been terrified of the dark, even to this day. I'm in just, it's just countless experiences I've had that made me dislike the dark. It's like entering a new world. And so it was time for bed, and I hated the beginning uh, of bedtime. Falling asleep was the hardest part. So as a kid, when I'd go to my room and put on my PJs, turn on the lights, turn off the light switch, take a deep breath, and stare at my bed. I'd close my eyes and turn off the lights and run to it. I always asked to have it against the wall, and I still have it against my wall today. It makes me feel safe against it, knowing it's a wall. That day, for some weird reason, I was terrified more than usual. I couldn't move. My heart was beating, and I could sense something behind me, staring, dark. I could hear low mutters coming from the direction of the closet. I froze, my ears heightened, trying to strain and hear what it was saying. I couldn't understand it at all. Some weird language, but unfortunately, I don't remember the exact words. My mom always told me to pray for it to leave, so I closed my eyes, covered my ears, and I began to pray for it to go away and leave me alone. Then I could feel a hand go through my hair. I stopped praying and lost my breath. I was wide-eyed, petrified at what was touching me. I kept going for a while until I mustered all the courage I had to turn around, and nothing was there, just the blackness of the room. So I turned back around an inch closer to the wall, literally smashing my body against it. I closed my eyes and started to pray again. Then the hand came back and started to brush through my hair again. I was so scared of what was touching me and combing my hair. My mind kept imagining some creepy person or monster touching me. I once again quickly turned and saw nothing. Then I slowly started to calm down and started to pray again. A crazy calmness came over me. Then again it started to brush my hair again. I wasn't scared this time and I ended up falling asleep. The next morning, I woke up and remember what happened last night. So I ran to my mom's room and she was awake watching TV and I told her what happened and she looked at me startled. Then she told me, it's probably your guardian angel letting you know that everything was okay. This made me feel better about what happened that night. Seriously though, it's the one thing that will stick with me for the rest of my life. Knowing that maybe I had an angel or something watching over me and protecting me made me feel calm when I was alone in the dark. Thanks. Until next time. I just think paranormal things should keep their hands to themselves. It would work out better that way. Yeah, I, I don't care if it's good or bad. I don't like things touching me. Hey, how you doing? It's all okay. What if you knew who it was? Mm -mm. Even if you knew? No, because it's still weird if they're dead. Even if I'm a ghost before you, I can't hold your hand. You wouldn't like that? That weird you out? Tell everyone right now, Jenny. Tell everyone. Okay. Say how you really feel. Okay. You you can <laughs> hold my hand as a ghost. We'll just get that settled right now. Can I do anything else? No. <laughs> Weirdo. So I have to wait till you're on the other side too? Yeah. Okay. No, just just ask him. Okay. <laughs> 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. Yang writes in, Hi, Tony and Jenny. I've uh, just started listening to your show at work. I've gotten really bored listening to my music over and over, so I started listening to your podcast. It's a great show. Not sure if it's a good idea for me to be listening to it since I do work third shift. I'm Mung and from Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Ha! Ah, right in my neck of the woods. Mm -hmm. Grew up about uh, 15 miles south of there. So there you go. Being Hmong, we grew up uh, being superstitious and believe in supernatural spirits. Generally, this kind of stuff doesn't happen to me. I swear it was straight out of a movie. I wanted to include a picture I drew. However, I'm not sure how to upload it. I believe that uh, it will show fear. It will keep coming back to scare you. Or if you show fear, it will keep coming back to scare you. Call it sleep paralysis or whatever you want, but this is what happened to me. Prior to this experience, a relative had just passed away a week ago. She was old and sick. It was during the week of the funeral when this happened to me. It was my day off. I'd gotten my errands done and I was feeling tired. I decided to take a nap on the futon in the living room during the day. 
As I was dozing off, I started to hear bare feet shuffling on the laminate floor. It surprised me because no one was home besides me. The sound of multiple feet shuffling got louder and louder. All of a sudden, a figure appeared on the other side of the coffee table. The figure had long black hair and was wearing a Hmong dress, the ones where they wrap it around their top. Hunched over with her long hair on her face, she started slowly walking on the other side of the coffee table towards my feet. As scared as I was, and as hard as I tried to move, I couldn't. I felt like I was paralyzed. She continued to move around the coffee table. When she reached the corner of the coffee table by my feet, she flew towards my face. At that very moment, I flinched and closed my eyes. The second I opened my eyes, she was gone. It was short, quick, and scary as hell. This again hasn't happened to me in a long time, and I'm glad it hasn't happened. Like I said, I enjoy your show, and I look forward to listening to your new shows. Okay, I think this is interesting because it sounds like a case of sleep paralysis. Mm -hmm. But what I think is funny is that the hag was wearing something that was more his culture. Sure. It was a Hmong dress. It wasn't something where we usually hear, you know, old lady in a white dress, blonde long black stringy hair sure. really creepy I, I just found that interesting that that character you know the the scary one that comes during the sleep mm-hmm. paralysis changed and appeared that way to that individual yes yeah that's interesting mm-hmm. very interesting and I, I don't blame him for saying I'm glad it's only happened one time yeah that's that's one of those things where once you have it happen you go yeah I don't really I, I'm good I'm thanks for sharing and uh, that was a wonderful show and tell. We're done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, thank you for sharing that, uh, that story with us. Linda writes in, this incident occurred when I was 15 years old. Moved into the attic of our home and noticed that the floor creaked all night like someone was moving around. But I just put it down to the house settling and the wind outside. I had some pretty dark thoughts in that room, which isn't like me at all. I'm a pretty loving person. I'm a mom first and have trained and worked as an RN. I have back problems, so I'm not currently working in the nursing field. I only mention these things to reiterate that it is not in my character to sit around with a black cloud over my head, thinking murderous thoughts about my family. I am a born caregiver type. To further explain the backstory, I have to say my family was plagued by addiction. My dad had a serious drinking problem that ended up killing him. When we first bought the house, my parents took us kids over and we got to walk through our new house. When we got to the attic, I stopped and said to my mom that an alcoholic man had lived in this room and had gone through alcohol withdrawal. I saw a woman who was his sister caring for him also in my mind's eye. Mom confirmed that they had bought the house from an older lady and her brother. I moved into the attic. I started having dreams of emaciated, wrinkled, creepy old man whispering to me in my sleep. I could never make out or remember what he said, though. It was creepy. Also, the floor would creak all night long and the TV would make sounds like it was settling to plastic creaks and pops. One night I woke up and saw my brother's bed up in the air about three feet off the floor. He was sleeping on a mattress on the floor. He had a bad dream and wanted to sleep in my room. He seemed really scared, so I let him. Thinking I was dreaming, I closed my eyes, tightened, determined not to open them again no matter what. The hair on my head and neck stood up. The next minute passed very slowly as I forced myself to relax and go back to sleep. I was successful mostly because I felt so exhausted and drained. Looking back, I know I wasn't dreaming because dreaming people don't feel that kind of fear while falling asleep. Weird to say, a floating bed was nothing compared to the ranges my dad, or the rages my dad flew into when he came home drunk late at night. One day I'd walked over to my friend's house to visit and my mom called and said I'd better get myself home because I was in big trouble. Perplexed, I asked her what I'd done. She replied that she told me to come downstairs and I had mocked her and made fun of her. I explained to her that I had not said anything to her and that I had been at my friend's house for several hours. She didn't believe me at first. I had to convince her. My friend backed up my story so she finally let it. There were more things that happened and I can write back some other time. The story's probably too long as it is it's nice to have somewhere to share this story people would look at me like i was crazy if i told this anywhere else love the show take care brewskies linda i think it's very interesting that she could 
pick up on not only what type of of spirits were there in the attic and what had happened there, but the detail of it. I mean, she knew that somebody had gone through alcoholic withdrawal mm-hmm. in that attic. That's really interesting to me that she was able to get that from just being in that space. Sure. Very sensitive person. Yes. And, and maybe not be completely aware of those abilities. Mm-hmm. You know, somewhat, but maybe she's she's more in tune with that than she really realizes until she starts sharing these sorts of things. I think it's even further than a sensitivity. A, sensi- a sensitive person would know that something was off, mm-hmm. that the space had a history that wasn't always pleasant, but to pick up that kind of detail, mm-hmm. that that's more than sensitive. Sure. So. Psychic? Maybe. A little a Maybe. hint of psychicness? Yeah. A touch? Mm-hmm. A tad? I'm trying to think of little other words. This is where I need a thesaurus. I think we hit it. Okay. Okay. All right. Moving on. Eight five five eight five three forty eight zero two is our number. Beth writes in, "Hi guys, I'm a new listener, adamantly for the Halloween season, but now I'm hooked." Here's my story that took place in Maryland from 2009 to 2014. My husband and I bought a foreclosed three-bedroom townhouse in an area we really liked. The home needed a lot of work to be moving ready, but it was all we could afford with two kids and a third on the way. We closed on the home at the end of October 2009, and it wasn't ready for moving until mid-February of 2010. It was a 1930s-style solid concrete block townhome at the end of the row. We had to replumb the entire house, drywall, put down new flooring. Well, that sounds like a fun project while you're pregnant. <laughs> yeah. My goodness. We were able to keep a lot of the original hardwood features of the house that we really enjoyed, including the beautiful hardwood staircase. We settled into our new home nicely, and over the months, we prepared for the new baby to arrive that first summer. I'd say our Haunting started off pretty slowly. Started with strange noises, creaks, rattling windows, things that were easily dismissed with healthy skepticism. One night, we awoke to an awful crashing sound. It sounded like someone had taken a drawer of silverware and thrown it down the steps. My husband got up to investigate and found nothing out of place. Often, when one of us would, uh, one of us uh, was home alone with the children and sitting down the stairs in our living room. We'd hear the bedroom upstairs door open, followed by footsteps leading down the hall to the top of the stairs. A few times, it was so frightening, I'd take a knife from the kitchen and slowly go upstairs to make sure we didn't have an intruder. As time went on, other things began to happen. Our new son was old enough to talk. He began to tell us at bedtime that he wanted to sleep with us because he was afraid of the lady in his room. We had no idea what he was talking about, but it frightened us quite a bit. Our daughter also claimed to see lights in her room from time to time. One night, our smoke detector started going off, but only beep at a time. Only one beep at a time. Thinking little of it, my husband changed the batteries and went back to bed. An hour or so later, it went off again. This happened several times over the next few weeks. My husband took the smoke detector and swapped it out with one in the basement. That one began to do the same thing. The old one in the basement functioned properly once removed from the upstairs. Eventually, we bought a new smoke detector, but it would still go off randomly. One day while painting the bathroom a new color, it went nuts, beeping until we took it down. We figured we might have a ghost at that point, and we joked that she must have not liked the color we chose. Another incident happened to my husband when he was alone with the baby. They were sitting downstairs when he heard an awful crash bang coming from the baby's room upstairs. He went upstairs and saw nothing out of place. Thinking something may have fallen in the closet, he opened the door to find all of the hangers swinging, but nothing out of place. We also often saw shadows and things out of the corner of our eyes, especially in the living room and on the steps. One evening, I actually sensed that someone was walking down the steps and saw an older woman in a nightgown coming down the steps. She was gone so quickly, I doubted that I ever really saw her. In about 2012, we started to ask our neighbors questions about the house's previous residence, We found that an older woman lived there from the 1950s till about 2002 when she passed away of cancer in the house. They said she had died in the living room because when she became ill, she could no longer go up and down the stairs. They also knew that her bedroom was what is now our youngest son's bedroom where he saw that lady. We went to sell the place in 2014 to buy a single family home. We hired the same inspector to inspect our new house. We inspected the townhouse for the buyer. 
He laughed and mentioned that now the ink was dry, the place was haunted. He nonchalantly replied, Yeah, I sensed a female presence on the second floor. My husband and I were both floored. He went on to explain that he had been sensitive to ghosts since having a near-death experience years ago. Our new house is pretty quiet and sometimes we actually miss having a presence. Our inspector certified our new home as ghost-free. So that's our story. Love the show. Thanks for sharing our story. That is exactly what we talk about all the time. People mm-hmm. becoming sensitive after a near-death experience. Sure. Just, they bend that veil and they're able to pick up that sensitivity and know when there's a spirit there. Mm-hmm. I think it's interesting. All of our stories have had to do with old lady spirits today. It is interesting. Mm-hmm. It seems to happen that way. Mm-hmm. I wonder if you could start up a business of being a paranormal ghost to a home inspector. Maybe. You know, people hire home inspectors to go through and check out things, and oftentimes they do a real shitty job. There's some good ones out there, but I've never had the fortunate luck of working with one. Mm -hmm. Uh, But uh, I I wonder if you could uh, do that. I mean, there's no guarantees, of course, with something like that, just like there really isn't any guarantees with a home inspector either. Um, I'm wondering uh, if if that could, uh, could be something. It's just essentially if a sensitive person walk through the house and if they sense something, they tell you what, what it is, what they think it may or may not be. And if there's nothing, there's nothing. I don't know. You're just, you're paying for a service that you don't know what you're going to get. And there's really no, nothing to validate it either. Until something happens. If she says, sure. Okay. The house has a spirit and then something happens. That's your only validation. Would you use a paranormal home inspector? No, because I would go by how I feel in it. Yeah. Which, you know, being on the sensitive side, Mm -hmm. I think maybe kind of along those lines. If I wasn't sensitive, I don't know that I would even believe in ghosts. It'd be a big letdown if you hire one and then they come and say, well, you got nothing here. It'd be a relief and kind of a letdown. Yeah. At the same time. Like, why am I paying you? Because they went through the house. No, I don't think it'd be a letdown. I think it'd be a sense of relief. Yeah. Because you've had somebody tell you, oh, it's not haunted. And you paid to have that person tell you for sure if it is or it isn't yeah they're not going to stand to gain or lose money no with either decision they make the same amount either way right no matter what i may have just invented something new somebody it's it's already out there it probably is oh and by the way there is pumpkin spice laundry detergent somebody found that and sent us uh, a link to to see that it's already out there we talked about that the other day and i tried to google it on the show and I, i had no luck Someone else certainly did. Keep trying. You'll invent something. Someday. Yeah. Someday I will create the wheel. Jeremy writes in, hi, my name's Jeremy. My sister and I are both very sensitive to the paranormal world. A little background on me. I was born with cancer and I found out I died on the operating table when I was about a year old. My paranormal experience started back in 1975. My grandparents just bought a brand new house. placed on the last street in the town of Hillsborough. It was an old farming town. This Hillsboro, Kansas? I don't know. They uh, built on an old livestock pen. When we'd come into town and visit the kids, we'd sleep in the sleeping bags in the front room. There'd be a light my grandfather made hanging over the console TV in the front room they left on for us. After they all went to bed is when the bad feeling started and it would intensify to an oppressive feeling in the air. The later it got, this happened every night sure I was able to sleep before they went to bed, but would often wake up in the night. When this happened, I would, from time to time, see multicolored lights in the hallway leading to the bedroom section of the home. The house is a single-level ranch-style three-bedroom home, with the front room, kitchen, and dining room in the center of the house, with a family room and garage on the other side. Anyways, the light I would see was always changing colors and floating about four feet in the air, and seemed to be coming from right in front of the door to my grandparents' room and the guest room, which my parents slept in. The feeling of dread would get so bad I would hide in the sleeping bag until I passed out. As I grew older, I ended up moving into the house when my parents split up and things got worse. I one time was playing on my uncle's Commodore computer with him and we both saw a man of native look standing in the doorway. I was about 14 at the time and we thought someone broke into the house. I confronted him, and he disappeared. These occurrences continued till I was in my early 20s and was watching the house from my grandparents. The last event happened about 1 a.m. 
when I was home alone, and a disembodied voice told me I was gonna, it was going to kill me. I was reading The Lord of the Rings at the time and thought my imagination was getting the best of me until I heard someone hit the wall so hard it knocked one of my grandfather's hand-carved wall hangings off the wall. I got up, looked through the house, and told it to bring it if it thought it could. Being of Highland Scott descent with Cherokee and Osage native blood in me, I find myself being not the brightest when this happen. Anyway, that's my story on this one, but have many more both in this house and other places around the area. I don't think all the things that he mentioned are related other than the location. Sure. Because it sounded like it started with orbs and then went on to other things. It's kind of a hotbed, it just sounds like. Yeah. If a uh, an entity is threatening to murder you, it's probably not the best idea to encourage it to do so. Yeah. Just in case. Just one of those things, you know, but like you said, it's like probably not the best of ideas. Yeah. You don't know what they're able to do. I mean, yeah. all they could, they could wield a knife at you or sure. whatever. Go flying across there. Yeah. You never know what's going to happen there, <laughs> but thank you for the story. And yeah, we'd love to hear more from you. There's a place in Kansas and I don't know where it is. Um, it's one of those where you look up, Hey, uh, attractions in Kansas. And this one happens to pop up. Okay. Uh, it's uh, some old cemetery and church and i believe it's completely fenced off now i believe it's in the middle of nowhere um which is a lot of the state mm -hmm. um and i i if i looked it up i could find out what it is but there's the the urban legend is that uh it is a portal to hell yeah it's up by lawrence oh you know what i'm talking about yeah okay yeah and uh, it's it's quite popular it's it's i think out kind of a ways between K-State and KU because K-State's sure. in Manhattan and mm -hmm. KU's in Lawrence and I think it's kind of out in the country in that general yeah. part of the state and I've heard about it I've heard it's very old and a lot of mm -hmm. different things have gone on there but it's like sure. it's supposed to be like a gate to hell yeah something like that it seems like places like that tend to be the biggest letdown when you actually visit them <laughs> they're so built up and like oh this is like really big and you know spooky and publicized and this is that you get there like really this is all this is it that's all there is. i find like some of the spookiest places that i've ever been to and i think that had like the weirdest vibes if you will were places that i didn't expect them to be okay that people didn't really know about or didn't really talk about i i, I you know or, or were very downplayed like what i can't think of it. okay <laughs> at the top of my i'm just uh but I, 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 that's just kind of a general how mm -hmm. I feel about these these places. Uh, one of them that I can say I felt really overplayed was there was in, there's another one of the urban legends in this area of the country where we're at. There's a bridge, and a lot of places have the bridge mm -hmm. story. There's one here called Theorosa's Bridge. Is that that's this one here? Yeah. Okay. I get my Wisconsin folklore and, and Kansas folklore mixed up sometimes <laughs> as far as where what was. And there's one up there too um, where there's stories. Um, and each area seems to have their their bridge story of usually a baby thrown off the bridge and died and something something mother roams forever yeah, all of that that sort of stuff and i remember going and seeing that and it was like really this is it you didn't even realize it's a bridge if you blinked you mm -hmm. know it just it, things like that really just kind of you know yeah you know, sometimes they have really you know sometimes they are pretty darn good uh -huh. but sometimes those are the ones that people don't want you to know are haunted either yeah that's true so interesting stuff jade writes in hi tony and jenny it's jade from yorkshire england this story is really cool but it's also really confusing and odd it isn't my story but my uncles my family have a bit of a history with the paranormal my dad's grandma who is my great grandma eliza was quite well known for being psychic or having psychic abilities it would seem that her gift may have been passed down through our bloodline collectively my family has had tons of paranormal experiences so it's hard for me to pick ones to share with you and your listeners Anyway, my uncle is 10 years younger than my dad, and so by the time this event happened, my dad had moved out of the family home and in with my mom. While my uncle Stephen still lived with my grandma, Betty, and granddad, Dennis. They live in, a st in an estate in Leeds called Cottingley. On the estate just beyond my grandma's garden, there was a small patch of grass where kids should play football or wherever. One day, my uncle Stephen, who was about 18 at this time, saw a boy 
sat on the patch of grass in the distance. He looked to be about 10 years old, and he had ginger hair, and he was sitting there playing quietly. The boy had a small dog with him. Uncle thought that there was something familiar about the boy and the dog, but couldn't quite place what it was, so he quickly forgot about it. There was nothing particularly unusual about the scene or otherworldly. A few months later, not exactly sure when it was, but my uncle Stephen was looking through some old photographs, and he was looking through suddenly, one caught his eye. It was a boy, age 10, with ginger hair, wearing the same clothes as the little boy he saw on the grass, and also in the picture was the same dog that he had seen with the little boy. The photograph with a picture of my uncle Steve was a, a picture of my uncle Stephen. The little boy that he saw was himself as a child. It suddenly clicked for my uncle. He remembered that he did, in fact, play on that patch of grass as a kid with a family dog. That was why the scene was so familiar to him in the first place. Obviously, my uncle remembers having a dog, but all dogs of the same breed can look really similar. Plus, it never crossed his mind that the figures could have actually been him and his dog. My uncle and I have discussed this experience and pondered about what it actually was that he saw. It doesn't seem likely to be a ghost unless it was a ghost taking my uncle from or, 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 talking to my uncle in a form or taking a form to perhaps lure him into some sort of interaction. We came to the conclusion that maybe it was a recording of sorts that perhaps places or areas can absorb energy and place certain events or occurrences on a loop over time. I've personally never heard of anything like this before, and I wonder if you might have any ideas as to what it could have been. I love the show and really enjoy listening to all the stories, so keep up the great work, Jade. It sounds like a wrinkle in time story, but what's different is seeing yourself mm -hmm. this time instead of just a glimpse into the past or seeing something like a building that used to be there that was torn down that's there again and it the next time you go it's gone again mm -hmm. it, it's really interesting this time he saw himself the past of himself is that supposed to be back to the future yes it is okay i know it's not very good no it sounds exactly like when you do the song from titanic <laughs> Do, 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 yeah, do, do, everything's do, do. like that. Quiet. You ever do that? No. You just kind of you, you you put your your lip to your teeth, and it sounds like a very bad Kenny G saxophone. It does not. <laughs> I'll serenade you some night. <laughs> what is? Are you playing the saxophone, Tony? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> I have no words. Uh, uh, I think it's a time machine garden. A time machine garden. <laughs> like a hot tub time machine? Kind of, yes, but okay. it's a time machine garden. They only have them in England. It's only it's only over there. Most of our wrinkle in time stories come from over there. They do. Mm -hmm. Is that because it was habited for a much longer period of time than over here? Although these, these flashbacks, or if you will, or wrinkle in time, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. they don't usually go back that far. Mm -hmm. I go back like 50 years. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I if I were to, to guess, I would say, you know, the wrinkle in time thing, I think, is a possibility. I think the other possibility is also um, just, you know, the absorption of the energy and the replay. Mm -hmm. Essentially, just like how, um, you know, you have the residual energy ghosts that really are not conscious. Essentially, this is the same thing. If, if possible... 100 years from now somebody may see the exact same thing there and it's not really the ghost of him it's the image an imprint of him but he's really not there because obviously he saw himself sure i think that it just might be that yeah he was lucky enough to see his own ghost that's kind of strange cue music for, for all the things we talk about that that one i think is kind of strange i like that one storm writes in i'm a new listener to your podcast and so far i'm enjoying the show keep it up and I feel that I can share the experiences I've had over my short life. I'll tell them to you in chronological order to the best of my ability, being that I just brushed off a lot of these experiences, chalking them up to my childish imagination, or they scared me enough to block them out till I was old enough to reconfront them. There might be some jumping around, forgive me. I'm also not going to disclose any real names. Most of these people would rather these events never happened and would rather not remember them. With that, let's begin. Location. South England, 
Illinois. Age, exact unknown. Elgin, Illinois. Elgin? Mm-hmm. Okay. Exact age unknown, younger than five. When I was younger, we lived in a small suburb of Chicago with my family. At that age, my grandmother lived in our basement. She was kind of old. Never had any issues with her until she moved out to live with my aunt. After that, the basement became our living room and playroom areas where we kept all our toys and entertaining things. Night or day, I never had a problem with the basement. I remember I, a few times uh, when I would wake up to go down the stairs in the pitch black just to retrieve my blue blanket that was under my brother's and came back from a camping trip. My brother, whom is six years older than I, was in Cub Scouts and I would go to the camping trips often on the weekends during the summer. After one such trip, he returned and recounted him and a few of the other boys spent the night before playing around with ghost stories and stuff along that line, something you would expect of young boys. This trip, though, he recalled an attack on their tent late at night from a dog of some kind that ended up biting him and a few of the other campers. The adults heard the commotion and dealt with the situation accordingly. No skin was broken, so there was no blood. My brother was given an ice pack. The night went on. We were told that when we picked him up, and he still had a slight outline in the area, the very next time I went to go retrieve my blanket, again, forgotten in the basement, I was very distinctly remembering feelings like something big and mean was watching me from the bottom of the stairs. Something that wanted to hurt me, and it scared me. So much so that I couldn't move. All I remember was looking down the stairs, getting this immense, hostile feeling, then collapsing to the ground and bawling my eyes out. After some time, my mother came out of her room, saw me, and asked what was wrong. I tried to respond, but nothing came out. All I could do was point down the stairs. After she turned on the lights, of which one turned on in the basement living room and at the bottom of the stairs, I was able to talk again, and the feeling was completely gone. To add to the creepiness, my blanket was sitting on the bottom step, someplace it would never be left, almost like it was taunting me. After that, a lot of bad things started to happen in our family. Our parents got divorced. Both parents began very hostile, even got even very hostile, even to me and my brother. Our whole family seemed to fall apart at the experience as they continued to happen. I'll send you the next encounter later this week. Always send us the next encounter. (laughs) people who always ask that question yes please send us your next story yes yeah personally i was waiting for dogs to appear in the basement okay but that didn't happen (laughs) unless that's in the next encounter yeah so let us know storm 855-853-4802 is our phone number here at real ghost stories online to share your real ghost stories with us of course you can also write into the website real ghost stories online dot um, let's go over here to a caller. Let's go to uh, Ashley in Indiana. Hi. Hey, Tony and Jenny. Uh, this is Ashley from Kokomo, Indiana. And first of all, I just want to tell you, uh, thank you so much for playing my story. Uh, I heard it a couple days before Halloween. I was uh, catching up, and I just got so excited. Uh, I, I was so happy that I, I had heard my story. And my sister is up from Tennessee, so she gets here too. That was really fun. So thank you so much for playing. Um, glad you guys liked it. Um, I'm going to tell you a story about uh, the house that me, my mom, and my sister lived in after my parents got divorced. Uh, it was my grandma's house, and my dad had just had it uh, like remodeled to sell. So my grandma was living in a nursing home, and uh, they were going to sell the house. Well, my parents got divorced, and my dad just went ahead and bought the house. So my mom my sister and me would have a place to live so we moved in there Uh, not long after we moved in um, my mom had met uh, another man I mean I don't think it was like right after but I can't maybe like a year or something so anyway uh, she met a man named Bill and uh, he seemed like an all right guy you know he was funny and i mean i was eight years old it doesn't really take much to entertain a kid and get you to like like him and so you know they got close they started dating and then eventually got married and he moved in and so things kind of started to happen when he moved in um i mean there was already kind of a lot of negativity going or going around in the house like I was doing very bad in school I didn't care about school 
I was really confused by the divorce and my dad had already met another woman, my stepmom, and there was a lot of anger and, you know, stuff between my parents and it was just a very bad time in all of our lives and my sister was having issues, you know, she was a teenager and she didn't get along with my parents and so yeah, it was just, just a lot of negative energy at the time. So when Bill moved in it kind of amped it up because I believe something was following him, something bad, because when he moved in, creepy shit started to happen. Like, we were in the living room, um, me and Mom, we were in the living room painting, and Bill and my sister, Shannon, they weren't there. They were gone, I don't know. And we're painting and having a good old time, and I look towards the hallway, and you can see my bedroom door from the living room, and I see something short and black run into my room. It was a shadow figure. And at the time, I didn't know what it was. You know, I wasn't really into the paranormal. I didn't know what it was. And I started crying and freaking out. And my mom was like, what's wrong, what's wrong? And I said, something just ran into my room. I didn't know how to explain it. I really didn't even think she would believe me. But she did. And she said, well, let's just pray. And we did. And... I felt a little bit better, but I was still very scared. And, I mean, stuff had happened in our previous home, so I wasn't new to creepy stuff, but to actually see it with your own eyes, you know, just really just knocks you off. And I was just a kid, so it really freaked me out. And I, it, it was really hard to explain, and it was, it was I didn't know how to feel. And... One one time, another incident that happened, I was trying to go to sleep. I was you know, laying in my bed, and I was facing the doorway. The doorway was open, and my stepdad, Bill, gets up, and he walks by my room to go to the bathroom. Well, there's another bedroom back there, um, you know, down the hall in the bathroom, and there's another way to get into the house back there. And my sister was not home. So he gets up, goes to the bathroom, does his business, gets out, walks by my room to go back to bed. A few seconds later, someone else walks by my room from the back, from where the bathroom is. And it was a man. And he was dressed in all white, white pants, white long sleeve shirt, and he had shoulder length hair. And uh, I don't remember feeling like really scared at the time. I just kind of remember feeling a little shocked. Like, who's this? You know, like. It was just me and uh, my mom and my stepdad in the house, and I'm thinking, well, who's this? I kind of wanted to get up and investigate, but I didn't. I was scared, and I was scared that it would come back and come into my room or something, and I I think I just said a prayer to make myself feel better, and I eventually fell asleep, and I told my mom, and she said, well, it's probably just his guardian angel or something but I I don't think it's what it was I, I don't know what it was but it it was definitely following him and it was it was scary I think about it now and I think if I would see something like that now I would probably <laughs> I don't know what I would do I'd probably piss my pants <laughs> but I just I don't understand how kids can see that stuff and, and just how they deal with it but that house was very creepy. And I mean, it was my grandma's house and she was a very good woman and religious, very sweet. And, but that family, my dad's side of the family has has a lot of negative stuff going on. And I barely know any part of my family over there because of issues and stuff that's happened. And, you know, I don't know what's going on, but not a lot of good things that happened in that house. So that probably didn't help. Um, I used to hear my name called at night when I was trying to go to sleep. I would hear, you know, Ashley. I would wake up thinking it's someone, you know, trying to get my attention and no one would be there. And I would just get this overwhelming, overwhelming, excuse me, feeling of fear that I was not alone, that I was being watched, that I was not welcome in my own house. And it was scary. It was really, really scary for a kid that young to experience. And I used to just pray constantly, you know, 
said, please take these feelings away. Please, whatever makes in my room, go away. And I, I didn't live there for very long, uh, maybe a year or a year and a half or something. I moved out and went back to live with my dad. And I'd almost spend the weekends with my mom. But uh, her and Bill didn't stay together for very long either. They had divorced and he moved out. And the activity died down, um, but the house still felt creepy. Uh, here recently, I had asked my mom if she'd ever felt anything or seen anything when Bill was there. She said no, but I don't think she was telling me the truth. I I think she'd seen some things as, as well. Um, so yeah, that house was creepy, and I've had things follow me my whole life, and it's just it's it's crazy how you know I people listening to your podcast I hear people say oh I've had these things happen my whole life and there's other people who haven't had one thing happen to them it's like what what makes us so special I guess to have all these things happen to us and then you know you know other people you know they don't have one thing happen to them so I don't I don't know I love the paranormal and obviously I, I listen to your show and I love it so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but that's my story. Um, I hope you guys like it. I hope I didn't ramble too long, and I hope to hear this on the air. And I love your guys' show, and, uh, yeah, have a good day. Uh, take care. Bye-bye. Thanks for sharing your story with us. There's something really creepy about the idea uh, of a entity or some ghost or whatever you want to call it. Knowing your name yeah and being able to say it out loud because mm-hmm. when you have other other things going on sometimes if you you see it something kind of in passing or out of the corner of your eye you can almost write it off as this really has nothing to do with me i just happened to catch this or you, know? you can pretend you didn't see it yeah oh it's just it's like oh okay that's that but it's not like it's not directly coming out for me mm-hmm. when it and when it's actually interacting with you and it knows your name That puts it in a whole different light of what the hell is this? Right. Yeah, I don't know. And I think it definitely had something to do with the stepdad. Yeah. You know, the way that everything really spiked when he was around. It's what triggered it, or maybe something had been following him or something came along. It was part of his baggage. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, it's it's a, a very creepy story. Thank you for calling in and sharing your experience with us. We do greatly appreciate that. If you like our show, you know what we ask you to do. Please help keep us on the air, become an EPP. It's only $5 a month. Get all the bonus episode, exclusive video content. Got uh, the uh, new monthly uh, video program we're putting up there called Seeing Ghosts, where we go through a archive of uh, ghost photos that are submitted to us from you guys and uh, share them and discuss them. It's a fun uh, program Uh, that our EPPs get as well in video form. Yeah, uh, check that out as well as all the EPP bonus episodes. 60, some of them there just uh, waiting for you to to enjoy. Only five bucks a month. You sign up for a full year and you get one month free. So check that out. RealGhostStoriesOnline.com. Click Become an EPP. Until next time, for Jenny Brisky, I'm Tony Brisky. Thanks for listening to another episode of Real Ghost Stories Online.